Alright, chapter 13, gases, but in variable conditions this time. This is pages 230, 233, exercise 13c in your book. Um, last time we just looked at P, V, N, R, or T, but this time we're going to change conditions. If we change the volume, what happens to the pressure? If we add temperature, what happens to the volume or what happens to the pressure? That kind of thing. So there's a few things to remember, and the things to remember look awful, but it actually takes very little time if you're careful. Since the two different sets of conditions are still under ideal gas law conditions, whenever we have two different sets of conditions, we simply set the ideal gas law equal to each other, keeping track. And then we cancel the variables that don't change, leaving only the ones that do change, we make sure that we respect the e equality in the the uh, algebraic uh, equation that we write, and then we solve the algebra for what we want, and then substitute in, remembering to use the ideal gas law units. Okay, so here's a couple of problems for you to try. What volume would 8.3 liters of gas at 121 degrees Celsius occupy if it was chilled down to negative 15 degrees C? And what volume would a gas occupy at a pressure of 4.32 atmosphere if the volume at 1.1 atmosphere was 6.92 liters? Okay. Give it your best shot after hitting pause. Work through the problem. See how well you can do with it. And whenever you get back, go through the problem and see how, see how you did. Okay. Hit pause. All right. You're back. Hopefully you did the problems. Let's take a look. Okay, so what volume would 8.3 liters of gas at this temperature <coughs> occupy if it was then chilled down to negative 15 degrees Celsius? Here's the deal. We want to recognize that, and the, the key to this is really putting the conditions together that belong together. So what volume? So we're going to solve for a volume. And you can call this volume 1, volume 2, volume A, volume B, volume initial, volume final. It doesn't matter. I'm going to call it V1. If this volume is V1, what's the temperature that we want to find that goes with this V1? Is it this one? Or is it this one? Let's read. 8.3 liters of gas at 121 degrees C. So in other words, we have this volume at this temperature. And what would happen to the volume that started off as 8.3 if it ended up getting cooled down? So this is the temperature one. So this is T2 and V2. You could call the <coughs> pardon me. You could call this V1 and T1, V2 and T2. That's fine. You'll get the same answer. The key is that this volume goes with that temperature. Once you do that, the rest of the problem is really not that bad. P1, V1 is equal to N1 R T1 over P2, V2 is equal to N2 R T. Two. So what things can we cancel out because we know they're the same, that they're not changing? Well, one is all the first set of conditions. Two is all the second set of conditions. R doesn't have a 1 or a 2 because R is equal to R. So 0 0.08206 divided by 0 0.08206 is 1. This looks like a great big 1, so it cancels out. What else cancels out? Did the problem say anything about adding or leaking out any of the gas from the balloon? No. So the moles don't change. They cancel out. Do we say anything about the pressure changing? No. That means the pressure had to be remaining constant. So what's the algebra that's left? V1 over V2 is on the left side of the equality. The equal sign comes through and T1 
over T2 is on the right side of the equality. Okay? <clears throat> That's what we mean by respecting the equality. Everything over here stays on the left side of the equal sign. Everything over here stays on the right side. Easiest way to get everything up into the numerator is to cross multiply. V1, T2, V2, T1. And then we solve for what we want. We decided to solve for V1 here. So we divide both sides by T2. So this whittles down to V1 equal to V2 T1 over T2. Now, remember, you have to make sure that your ideal gas law units are being used. The volume 2 was 8.3 liters. T1 is right over here, negative 15 degrees Celsius. You have to convert to Kelvin. So what is negative 15 plus 273? I use a calculator because I can't do it without messing it up. But my calculator doesn't mess it up and it's 258 Kelvin to three sig figs and then what do we have at the bottom T2 which is 121 plus 273 which adds up to 394 right make sure 273 plus 121 394. Okay. Alright, so the Kelvins cancel out. Even if you would have just put in the Celsius temperatures, the Celsius would have canceled out, but you would have ended up with a negative volume, or you would have ended up with an incorrect volume. You have to convert to the ideal gas law units. Alright, but now that we have that, let's punch the numbers into our calculator. Okay, I get to two sig figs, because 8.3 is two sig figs, 5.4, my units are liters, and before we leave the problem, does it make any sense? Would you expect the volume of a balloon to go down or go up if the temperature cooled off? Well, of course, the volume needs to go down, so that's at least makes some sense. It's a sanity check. Okay, good. That's one. Let's do the other. I'll move it up a little bit. What volume would a gas occupy at this pressure if the volume at this pressure was this? Is it clear that this is the pressure that goes with this volume? And if we're going to solve for V2, we want to know at the new pressure. I hope that makes sense to you. You have to do that right, because if you don't, you mess up the problem for sure. <coughs> okay, so we caught two different sets of conditions, so let's set both of which are ideal gas law conditions, so let's set them equal to each other. Good. Now let's cancel out the parts that aren't changing. R never changes. Because it's a constant. Alright, so that cancels out. Notice that temperature isn't mentioned and moles aren't mentioned. Okay, so what's left here? Well, this is just algebra, right? So, the left side of the equality is P1, V1 over P2, V2. There's the equals and what's on the right side of the equality. I cancel those out, but they also look like ones, right? Isn't that what canceling is? 0 0.08206 divided by 0 0.08206 is 1. So this is 1 times 1 times 1, or 1 over 1, on the right-hand side. Okay, so whenever we cross-multiply, we get P1, V1, is equal to P2, V2. Up here, it was V1, T2, V2, T1. 
So you can't just assign the numbers, you have to do the algebra, but it doesn't take very long. Because once you're here, it's real easy to solve for what you want, V2. So we're going to divide both sides by P2. So V2 is equal to P1 V1 over P2. Good. Substitute P1, 1.11 atmospheres. V1, 6.92 liters. P2, 4.32 atmospheres. Atmospheres cancel. Solving for liters. This time everything is three sig figs. So what do we get when we plug in this time? 1.11 times 6.92 divided by 4.32. I get 1.78 liters. Now, before we leave, does it make any sense? If we have this volume at this low pressure, think of a tire pump, and we punch down on the top of the cylinder and put way more pressure on that volume. The volume has to go down, right? So therefore that answer makes some sense. All right, so your job is to go through the problems and then do that quick little sanity check to make sure it makes sense at the end. Crank through, be careful with your algebra, and good luck.